This video is about partial fractions with non-repeated, irreducible, also known as prime, quadratic factors. Okay, lots of words here. Now, you'll recall that this is within our partial fractions series. This is not the first video in the series, but we're continuing to build the different cases and scenarios we may encounter. And the notes we'll have for this are still basically the same as far as the general notes where we follow these basic steps no matter what case we're in. First, we'll consider the degrees of the numerator and denominator. Uh, secondly, we'll factor the denominator if possible. Thirdly, we'll set up a decomposed rational equation. Fourthly, we'll clear the fractions in that equation. And then fifthly, we're going to find the numerators of these new fractions, that these pieces that we're decomposing here. And we'll have one of two ways to do that. We can substitute convenient values or use a system if needed. Now in this particular case, we're calling it case three, it's when the denominator has non-repeated, irreducible, which means prime, quadratic factors. So, okay, this is clearly different from the first two cases then. In this case, one big difference we'll be seeing is that now the decomposed numerators are degree one linear. Let's try an example where we want to find the partial fraction decomposition for the following rational expression. The numerator is 3x minus 5, and the denominator is x cubed minus 1. Okay, if we go through all of our steps from our notes above, and we compare, first of all, the degrees of the numerator and denominator, we'll find that the degree of the denominator is already larger, so we don't have to worry about any uh, long division in this case. So let's copy down our expression here. The numerator was 3x minus 5, and the denominator is x cubed minus 1. Now remember, our first step is to factor the denominator. You may recall that that's actually a difference of cubes. And so that denominator, following the difference of cubes formula for factoring, would turn into a binomial of x minus 1 first, and then following it, a trinomial, which would be an x squared plus x plus 1. So if needed, you may, you may want to review some factoring, but that's a difference of cubes formula. And now we'll proceed with setting up our decomposed rational equation here. By setting this equal to, we'll have one fraction per factors in our denominator. Now let's consider what's going on. We have actually two factors in our denominator. The first is an x minus 1. That's linear. We saw that case already. But the second is now this x squared plus x plus 1. That is a quadratic factor, but it's not factorable further, right? So you can't apply any factoring methods to factor that trinomial any further, which means it's a prime quadratic factor. That's exactly the case we're considering. Now, the first factor, the x minus 1, that's just a linear case. It's just a distinct linear factor. As we've seen already, that will show up as a denominator, x minus 1, in our first fraction, and the numerator for a linear denominator like that is constant, so we'll just use a to represent the constant. Okay, we'll move on, and for the second factor, the prime quadratic factor, we'll create a new fraction, and we're going to just put that prime quadratic factor as the denominator of it, but then, as you recall from our notes above, the numerator this time is degree 1 linear, which means we're going to have to write it as bx plus c. So this is new when comparing with the cases we've already discussed. Um, this is a degree 1 linear numerator. Notice we had to throw that variable x in there to make that happen, but we still have the a, b, and c's showing up, and those are what we need to find. So the rest of this is the same as the process has been. We're going to clear the fractions next by multiplying by the LCD. That would leave us with 3x minus 5 on the left side. On the right side, we have an A, and then the x minus 1 would cancel, leaving us with that quadratic prime factor, so x squared plus x plus 1 there after the A. And then in the second fraction term, we have the trinomial denominator would cancel, um, giving us, now the numerator is already a bx plus c, so well, let's bundle that up in parentheses just to be clear and, and safe here. And then remember that quadratic uh, prime factor would cancel with the LCD copy of it, but then the linear factor would still remain. So really there's an x minus 1 that would be left 
um, being multiplied in with that numerator. That's just after clearing fractions. At this point, like we've been doing, once we clear the fractions, we need to find our missing uh, numerator variables. So that would, of course, uh, amount to a, b, and c. And we can find those, as our notes say, and as we've been doing in our examples, ideally by picking convenient values for x. This doesn't always work. Uh, we'll see an example eventually where it doesn't. But if it works, it's much easier than the alternative, which is making a system of equations. So let's try this again, where we pick some value of x that when plugged into the cleared fractions equation, um, maybe we can get it so that two of our variables, a, b, and c, disappear, but one doesn't. And if you think just a little bit about that, when x is 1, that would actually happen because, let's go ahead and plug it in. On the left side, we'd have 3 times 1 minus 5. That's just a negative 2. Uh, remember, we have to plug it in all the way across on this equation. Moving on to the right side, we have an a there. And then if I plug it in, I'll just have a 3 after the a. Plus, and then, OK, here it is. When I plug in x as 1, this last factor of x minus 1 would turn into a 0 which would wipe out that whole term, which actually takes out the b and the c from our equation, which means we should be able to solve for a happily at this point. And so we can do that just by dividing by 3 on both sides, which would tell us that a equals negative 2 thirds. OK, so we found a. That's good news. We need to go back and find b and c. So as we've been doing, let's recopy our cleared fraction equation. Uh, we have to work on it again, so we'll just copy down the 3x minus 5 equals. Now instead of writing the a, we know what it is now, so I'm going to put the new value of negative 2 thirds, and that'll be multiplied by the trinomial we had of x squared plus x plus 1. We'll continue on to say plus, and then we have this bx plus c in parentheses times the x minus 1. Okay, so our goal is to find B and or C, and ideally we'd like to be able to pick a convenient value of X so that when plugged in, um, we'd be able to do that easily. Now notice the way this is set up, if I pick X to be 0, then this B term will drop out, but the C won't. That's good news. So let's go ahead and plug in X as 0 in this cleared fraction equation. That would give us 0 minus 5 on the left side. On the right side, we'd have negative two-thirds times, and then if I put zeros here, this parentheses would contain just a one. So I'd have just negative two-thirds plus, and then the b value would actually disappear because of the zero, leaving me just with a c times, again, if x is zero, at the end I'll have a negative one, zero minus one. All right, if I work just to get c alone here with some simple algebra, just moving things around, we should end up with c equals 13 thirds. It's a fairly ugly fraction, okay? But we want to be able to work with fractions. Do not turn it into a decimal and round it. Just leave it as 13 thirds. All right, so that's our c value. Our next step would be to try to find b. And so let's recopy our equation again. We have 3x minus 5. So again, we're just copying this cleared fraction equation down. 3x minus 5 equals, we already had the negative 2 thirds in place of a. And then we had x squared plus x plus 1 after it. And then plus, and then, uh, okay, we already found, we just found c. So I could call this inside here bx plus 13 thirds. That's what the old c, where the old c was. And that's all times x minus 1. Our last step is to figure out what b is. We've already found a and c. But to find b, okay, I could pick anything I want for x. Uh, I just don't want to eliminate b. So I don't want to pick 1, because that would actually wipe out that whole term. And we've already used 1, so we don't want that. We also, of course, wouldn't want to use 0. We already used it, plus it wipes out this whole b term. So we need anything else. Of course, we want to make our lives easy, if possible. Why don't we just pick something simple like 2? If x is 2, I'll plug that in. 3 times 2 is 6, minus 5 is 1 on the left side. Moving across, I'll have negative 2 thirds times, and then in this trinomial, 2 squared is 4, so 4 plus 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7. So it's really negative 2 thirds times 7. Plus, moving inside here, this would be a 2b 
plus a 13 thirds plus, and then if x is 2, 2 minus 1 is 1. That's about the only good thing that just happened with that number. It's kind of some nasty numbers here. But if you take some time and just do the fraction arithmetic to solve for b, so you can even just pause the video and try it, we should end up with b equals 2 thirds. Now once we find our a, b, and c values, which we've done, we need to go back and write them in their places in our original decomposed rational equation. So we'll go ahead and bring that down and just maybe tuck it in this corner here. Remember it was originally a over x minus 1. Okay, so we'll put our x minus 1 and then we found a to be negative 2 thirds plus, and then our fraction was bx plus c in the next numerator. Well, we found b to be 2 thirds, so we'll say 2 thirds x plus, and then we found c to be 13 thirds. And then that denominator, of course, was the prime quadratic factor of x squared plus x plus 1. Now, this is really our answer, but it's not in a very polished form. So let's rewrite this one time and do something better with these fractions in the numerators. That's not really a proper way to leave them as a complex fraction. So if we rewrite this one time, we could adjust it and bring this 2 thirds down in front of the first fraction to end up with negative 2 in the numerator and then 3 times x minus 1 in the denominator. There's the negative 2 thirds from our original numerator, but it's written in a more proper sense here if we bring it out in front. And then <clears throat> similarly for the next fraction, notice there's a common factor in the numerator of, thir of the 1 third. So if I factor the one-third out of both of those fractions, I could put the one-third in front of this fraction, which means there'd be a three down below, really the one above what the one wouldn't even show up. So we'd have on top a 2x plus 13. That's, that's those numerators we had at the previous step. The one-third from those denominators is now factored out in front of the denominator. And so after it, we'd have x squared plus x plus 1. And this is good enough for our answer. Of course, you know, you could distribute the threes and the denominators. You wouldn't really have to, but this is an, an acceptable form of our answer in the decomposed uh, rational expression.